Across the stars, beasts of massive proportions stalk the seas of space. Call them what you want, space monsters, vacuum beasts, leviathans. All these names and outdated concepts of whatever creatures these terms once stood for will never truly compare to what they are. But to us humans, we call them void landers. When you come across one of them, you have two choices, run or die. Most of the time, they will leave you alone. But when you provoke one of them, you better have your metronite coils loaded because you will not be able to fly away on sunlight engines. The large ones usually weigh more than small planets, despite their physical size being around that of a large asteroid. The gravity, well generated from their mass, can be manipulated into tractor beams to force ships to either smash into an asteroid or collide with their shell, depending on the species of void lander. After that, they will consume the remains of not only you, but also your ship. The large ones are the most dangerous when angered, but if you keep your distance, they will too as they prefer to feast on asteroid belts rather than on ships or people. The real problems come from the smaller ones. They are usually only about the size of small asteroids. Small void landers can access subspace, unlike their larger cousins, due to their decreased mass, allowing them to move through obstacles in real space. They can appear inside a colony or a ship, and cause massive amounts of damage while thrashing within one. This only happens when space colonies and ships use Gravitech generators that produce gravitons. For the uninitiated, the presence of gravitons permeating through to subspace acts like a funnel to real space. Furthermore, gravitons in real space act like a beacon in subspace. It is why they congregate around systems with high-mass celestial bodies. Even though, if they were to get caught in the gravity well of a planet or a star, they would not be able to escape. However, it is still possible for a void lander to drop out of subspace and into real space without a gravity generator, if you intercept its trajectory, because they can sense the microgravity created by the mass of real space objects such as ships or spinning stations, while in subspace. Additionally, if a void lander that is larger than your ship drops out of subspace, it will expand your ship and destroy it from the inside out. So remember to avoid locations that are reported to hold a large number of small void landers. The dangers that these creatures pose to civilized space necessitated that countermeasures be developed against them. These measures came in many forms. The discontinued use of Gravitech generators in the construction of space colonies, a change in building location, the creation of anti-gravity generators, and the formation of the Lance Caster Foundation. Space colonies are constructed in the void between systems and use spin gravity to decrease their proximity to void landers while reducing their gravity signature in subspace, respectively. Anti-gravity has the opposite effect of gravity regarding its relationship to subspace. Rather than acting as a funnel to real space, it will act as a barrier. The only problem with it is the generation of anti-gravitons. This issue is mitigated by the harvesting of void landers that carry negative mass inside their bodies. The only reason that anti-gravity exists today is because of the Lancaster Foundation. Originally founded to aid victims of void lander attacks, their role in society expanded to encompass a variety of different jobs from researchers to subspace hunters. So, wounded after first contact with VL-01 in the Proxima Centauri system, the Lance Caster Foundation has been around for 267 years, according to Earth Standard Time. Their accomplishments include the discovery of the faster-than-light enabling substance known as metronite from void lander carcasses of Category 15 and above the discovery of negative mass in Category 10 and above, 
as well as the creation of the first functional subspace vessel. They are responsible for regulating the hunting of void landers and serve as forest rangers while performing anti-poaching operations throughout the 16 galaxies. The Lance Caster Foundation was named after the weapon that killed the first void lander, a point-blank shot from a Type 34 anti-planet particle Lance Caster. The Lance Caster Foundation is the leading organization in faster-than-light technologies, void lander weaponry, and subspace research. Although a lancing license is not needed to hunt void landers, most high-paying employers looking for void hunters will disregard anyone without one. A lancing license can be attained by enrolling in one of the Foundation's many hunting or research institutions that are scattered throughout the entirety of the Intergalactic Commandment. Formerly titled as Lancers, the graduates of any Lance Caster Institute are highly sought after, as graduating from one is no easy feat, with the vast majority being humans. Lancers have been intergalactically recognized as role models for people to follow and are given special treatment in accordance with commandment law. The jobs expected to be performed by Lancers vary depending on whether they are a hunter or a researcher. Hunters work as space fishermen, using giant versions of the first subspace vessels to traverse it. They catch subspace-dwelling void landers for their meat and negative mass, as it is easier than trying to hunt a real space-dwelling one. <laughs> void lander meat is one of the few foods that are edible to all species. The meat helps ease the logistics of having multiple species with differing chemical compositions on a single ship with varying dietary needs. Their meat is also quite delicious and filling, with consumer markets failing to meet the demands. One might expect subspace to be some completely alien reality that defies the laws of physics, and in some ways, it does. Subspace is a parallel dimension with the same laws as our dimension. The only difference is that there is a thick and extremely cold atmosphere and there are no planets or stars. The only sources of light come from white holes if researchers from the Foundation are to be believed. 